Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jason with uh, JW Classic VW. Welcome back to the grunge. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome back to the show. We are doing an EFI triple build on my car, my baby, my 1956 Owenu Ragtop Goose. Yes, she's gorgeous, but we have had some delays. We've had some things that have stopped the completion of this build. You guys know what I'm talking about, don't you? That Berg 5-speed. We ran into some issues, and I've got some updates for you guys. And some of the painting I've been doing and other brake upgrades. Willwood brake upgrades. Let's get let's, let's let's talk about some cool stuff first before we get into the, the nitty-gritty business of the uh, Berg 5-speed and kind of what's going on with that, what happened, and uh, where we are right now. So, we're doing some brake upgrades. You guys saw in the intro the Willwood brake upgrades, and I'm going to take it to the front of Goose and kind of explain everything that's going on with that here in a second because I know it was just like a silent intro, kind of uh, teasing you guys a little bit about what's going on with that. But let me sh turn around real quick and show you some of the painting that's been going on. Do, 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 do. All right, so I took, I have a new master cylinder that kind of goes with the whole brake upgrade that I'm doing with the, uh, the Willwood brakes. And I had a dual master cylinder already, but when I got a hold of Pete over at Air Cooled, guys, he told me that uh, it'd be better if I went with this one. And I think it's because it has a larger um, piston inside of it. Yeah, a larger bore, larger piston, which helps out with the braking. And, you know, when you're going four-wheel disc brakes, which we got, you know, we got the empty disc brakes. This is the rear disc brakes. And this has only got one coat of paint on it right now. Yeah. But this is one coat, and I'm doing three. And let me show you what it looks like when you get done with it. So this is three coats of that uh, gloss enamel. This is a brake, a high heat brake paint. And there is some areas that I kind of didn't cover and I might need to clean up still. I don't know. I haven't got it in place yet to see if there's gonna be any issues, but I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Give me a thumbs up down below guys or comment on the color choice that you would go with. You guys know already that uh, red is the color for goose. I got the red back in here. I've got the my red interior, which is not in Goose right now. But, you know, red is my accent color, and that's kind of like what I'm going with. So, painting the brakes was something that I planned on doing later. But since we've got some time now, because the uh, Berg 5-speed is off in California with uh, Dave Foltz getting all fixed up, I went ahead and did it now. Let's go up to the front of Goose, pull off this wheel real quick, and show you guys the business of what has been going down. Oh yeah, I'm sure that some of you guys are going to be curious about the paint that I'm using. If you've been following the social media, you know, Instagram, Facebook, you've probably already seen this, but this is that Pour 15 caliber paint. And it goes on super good, guys. And it's like, I went ahead and prepped my surfaces, you know, kind of cleaned them off with some mineral spirits, used a little bit of mineral spirits, and cleaned off all the surfaces of the metal before I went ahead and started applying this stuff. I didn't do any primer coat, and that's just preference there are some high temperature primers out there as well but uh you know they kind of recommend that but i'm not going with it i just went ahead and said hey that that little pint of paint that thing goes a long way and i just got to paint this stuff so yeah it worked out pretty good let's go ahead and uh check out those front wheel wood brakes yeah buddy Okay, well there it is, guys. There is the four piston Willwood brakes, and this is the old ones that I have. This is the two piston. And what I mean by that, that there's one piston here, and there's one piston on the other side. And with these uh, calibers, you've got two that are opposing each other when it comes to the pistons. See? The size difference? Let me move you down here so you can get you a little closer to what I'm talking about. Let's hold this up there so you can see the difference in size. There you go. So, yeah, pretty much about twice the size, twice the size. And I was a little bit concerned whether or not that was going to fit with the 15-inch wheel, but uh, it does. No problem. No problem whatsoever. Now, clamping force becomes the main part here. Like, when you've got four pistons, there's a lot more clamping force that you're going to have on this rotor. See, I started off with a smaller set, and then uh, I contacted Peter where they're cool and asked him, Hey, man, do you, can you uh, do an upgrade to, to the four piston? Because I wanted something more braking. I needed more braking power because of the engine that we're building guys the engine transmission all the suspension this, this is gonna be my little race car and we want to be able to stop kind of important the faster you go the uh, more heat that you generate at the brakes especially the front brakes because if you guys didn't know or not there's a lot more braking done at the front end of the car versus the rear end of the car 
the, the uh, differential there, I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but I'm guessing somewhere, you know, just saying maybe 80 to 20. It's, uh, I don't know. I'd have to check with, uh, maybe Pete would know a little bit more about what the, uh, the actual braking done at the front is. The, uh, the setup I have right now with the master cylinder should work out great when it comes to the braking that we're looking to get on Goose. But it's pretty. Besides just being the braking power that I need, it's going to look really good through those wheels of mine. So yeah. Alright guys, it's that time in the video to remind you, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this content if you're enjoying it, which you got to be. There's all kinds of cool stuff you're learning about. Turbos and brakes and transmissions and <sighs> how much it all costs. It's... We haven't talked about that yet, but it's expensive. <laughs> now, back to the video. All right, guys, it's time to get into that discussion, and I'm sure you're all super curious about when it comes to the Berg 5-speed, what has Dave found, and uh, how long is it going to take to get the transmission back? Well, first off, I want to kind of clear up some confusion. Uh, some of you guys think that I bought this directly from a local manufacturer, maybe a local builder here in the Houston area, which is not the case. Let me kind of break it down. It's a used transmission, a used engine that I picked up, and... When I bought it, it was in good shape. As far as I knew, there were no issues with the assembly internally, externally, no damage that I could see. And it had been ran for you know three or four years on a car previously with the turbo setup that I'm putting into Goose. Now you can see that I've also done some things with the engine. I've you know I've replaced the rings, uh, you know a bunch of cleanups, a bunch of other things going on that I did. Now the transmission was in a later chassis. So when I got the transmission is when I found out that. The nose area didn't line up the way it should with an earlier chassis. There was going to have to be some cutting done that I really didn't want to do. There was already some notching and cutting that I had to do to the torsion tube to get the Berg 5 speed into there. And I didn't really want to do any more than that. So that's when I found out about the Dave Foltz kit, which allows you to relocate the nose cone down in a little bit, you know, in the right direction, about an inch or so, so that you get a nice perfect alignment. Now with that, I had to go and find somebody locally, and I had to find somebody locally. What I did is I found somebody locally that said they were gonna be able to install the shift forks and kind of like set it up so it'd be good to go. And I wouldn't have to, you know, worry about doing that myself, which I don't know about, you know, Volkswagen transmissions yet. It is a goal of mine to pick up some tools and some old transmissions and start plugging away and figuring out how that all works. But uh, I'm not the easy jeezy guy. You guys know easy jeezy. He's been doing this forever when it comes to transmissions, and he doesn't claim to be any kind of expert, but he knows quite a bit because he's been doing it for so long. Well, I ain't on that level yet. <laughs> Easy Jeezy, you're the man. <laughs> but I'm not on that level yet. So I got a local guy to install the shift forks, and that's when we ran into issues, guys. That's where we ran into the issues with the uh, input shaft not turning the way it's supposed to be, because what I ended up finding was that on the five gear hub, out the back side, the five gear hub and the five gear washer and the nut that goes on the back side of that started rubbing and then it kind of went oblong because it wasn't installed correctly, it wasn't seated correctly. Uh, well, I've talked to, to the local guy, the local guy that did the work, and uh, he wants me to let him know what I find so that he can reimburse me on whatever expenses I might incur, but uh, I really don't foresee that happening because it cost me like 400 bucks just to ship it out. It's probably gonna cost me a couple thousand bucks just to get it fixed. And then another couple, well, four or five hundred bucks to ship it back out here. <laughs> so it cost me about $1,500 to have the shift forks installed and that work done here locally. It'd be nice to see that money back to kind of offset some of my expenses, but I'm not expecting it. But I'm glad that I did ship off the transmission to Dave because he did find some things that I didn't know about. And these are things that may have caused damage to my transmission later down the road. And you guys saw, if you were following my Facebook, that I was looking for a third gear. That's because I had Dave tear apart the transmission and Magnaflux, the ring and pinion, and all the gears to find any kind of cracks. You know, that's, uh, that's how you find cracks in your gears. And the only way to do that is to Magnaflux everything. So he did find some cracks in third gear. So the search was on. And apparently, finding gears right now is super difficult to do. But uh, I got lucky. Aircool.net had one left in stock. Woo! <laughs> So I shipped that one off to Dave. He should have it sometime next week, hopefully, and he can start working on putting everything back together. We also found that the fifth gear hub, which is supposed to be a pressed foot fit on the input shaft because I have a solid uh, Weedle, Weddle, Weedle input shaft that's inside of there, or main shaft that's inside of my transmission, and it's supposed to be a pressed fit for that, that fifth gear hub. Well, 
that was not the case. He was able to pull that thing off pretty much by hand. So he has a fifth gear hub in stock there. That's why I'm going with a transmission guy that knows how to do Volkswagen transmissions out in California because he's got a, a, a uh, Berg fifth gear hub in stock. Awesome. <laughs> so he's working on getting it all back together, figuring out what else might be wrong with it. But, you know, as he gets things set up, that's when you'll see if there's anything else wrong. There was some other installation issues when it comes to the way things were set up with my local guy that were incorrect. So all in all, lessons learned, expensive lessons learned. Whenever you're dealing with things like this, custom Volkswagen, custom anything automotive, you're going to run into unforeseen costs. And this is a unforeseen cost, lessons learned. Now, some of you guys were like, why don't you take it back to the local guy to have the transmission worked on? I'm a firm believer, guys, if, if somebody proves that they're not able to complete the job or the work that you give to them, you don't keep giving it back to them. I should have sent the transmission out to California originally, but I was trying to save some money. You guys already heard it's like three or $400 to box that bad boy up and ship it out there. That's just one way. So I was trying to save some money and then bite me in the butt. Lesson learned. And uh, it's all not gonna matter. It's none of that's gonna matter once I get the transmission back in Goose and we're driving down the road doing, going fast. <laughs> none of that's gonna matter. That's the main thing, guys, and that's why I share this channel with you and I share kind of like what's going on with Goose because I love, I love a car. I love driving it. I, it's been down for a year now, but I'm doing all these crazy upgrades, so some of that's understandable, but when you run into things like this, these, uh, these issues that you should not have had, they, they, they kind of they kinda hit you right in the gut. And, well, hit me right in the gut for a couple weeks. But let's get back to something else. Let's talk about something cool that I did uh, on Monday last week. Let's go over to Daryl's place. You know the guy I got the engine and transmission from? Let's go to Daryl's place and kind of look around at some of the stuff that he has going on. Let's do it, guys. See you in a second over at Daryl's. They got some really cool different kinds of bolts and nuts and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Neat fasteners. Uh, oh, All yeah. the neat fasteners. You just gotta kind of look through there and pick out what you think is gonna look cool. I painted my brakes in my master cylinder. Well, oh, yeah. I painted one caliber so far. I got that poor 15 caliber paint, and that shit is crazy good. It flattens out. It's, it, por it's non porous. What's it's that? Made that way. It's, the paint or what? Yeah, yeah. The paint is non porous. It means it don't have any pores. Now we're going to try to pull this all the way out past that tube and then drop it down. We're place. replacing the rear seal too, right? Or is this one okay? No, that one's good. Look, look at it. It's it, wants, it looks pretty good. I never mess with it, you know. To... Yeah, it does look good. I'm hoping that the, the rear, this rear tin that I had to shape for the, for the Bergman shroud is, is going to clear the way it should once I put it back all in there. He makes a... I called him up and he said basically they take one of the stock ones and they just trim it to, to size. He said you could just do the same thing there, you know, save yourself some money. So that's what I went in and did. So we'll see how it fits. It's, it fits really good with the transmission, like sitting right on the transmission, so it seems like it'll be all right. Where's your coupler at? Did you get that yet? No. That's the guy that's doing it for me is the one I was telling you about. Did you today. add these? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's what you're talking about, like the vibration and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Stop them from touching each other. That's sweet. I'm gonna rub my paint off. You just tacked them on there? No, I have a, uh, I have a uh, welder. Oh, I, like a, I have a uh, the ones that like yeah. cinch on both sides. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. For like doing uh, spot welding. Spot welding. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go take a look inside. Uh, I want to look at that uh, turbocharger. Oh, you can't show that yet. No. No, that's not. That's a, That's like a no no. Hold on a sec. Did you guys hear that? We're not allowed to look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, secret yeah. squirrel stuff. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it looks cool. This is the motor that's going in, in the green one. This is the big motor, guys. This is the 600 horsepower monster that's going in the... Your green one's a 54? Yeah, these are, these are what you call nice size valves. Nice size valves. That's called heavy breathing. <laughs> yeah, yep. Titanium valves, manly. High heat temp exhaust. 
This is, uh, if you guys never seen one of these before, this is all that autocraft greatness going on right here. This and is, uh, uh, you see all the little dots on here? That's from being scanned in 3D printing. I'm going to show you guys a picture up over here of what it looks like when he 3D prints all this stuff or shows it in. What's the software that you use? SolidWorks. 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 For designing uh, and making sure everything fits before you put it in. It's pretty cool. We got going on over here some more of the throttle body action. Yeah, these are the uh, throttle bodies that are going on my car and the ones and the ones that I make. These are the smaller ones, right? These aren't your big ones that are right, going on? Right, right. And uh, here are the, uh, the butterflies. The butterflies. They just need to be deburred. They've all been cut. They're ready to go. They have a, uh, uh, basically what you would want to say, a six degree angle. And so they absolutely seal perfectly. That's super fancy. So they're cut right to spec. Very cool. And yeah, Wayne's putting together a kit, guys, a turbo type kit, the one that he's putting in his red car out there that'll be available in limited quantities for anybody that's interested. So check out the description below for information on how to get a hold of Wayne. And this is the turbo header. Yeah, this is the header just like on your car, Jason. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, cut off the uh, blow-off valve, put it back at the collector. Yeah. Really and good. this is a little bit smaller turbo than his because this is going to be a, a 1835. So the turbo is a little bit smaller. And, um, you know, it's all ceramic coated, the housing both. Uh, it's good to ceramic coat everything, guys. It, you know, it, it stops the heat. Uh, from being dispersed it out uh, so much. It's got 402 sensors. Jason's is running the same thing. So we can monitor each uh, cylinder. And, uh, and then I uh, custom fab this uh, header up and then had a gentleman weld it, uh, which uh, they do a really nice job. So. I can't wait to hear this thing. It looks like a cherry bomb on the end. <laughs> yeah, I think it's gonna be louder, uh, which is good. I have a coupler here. So if I don't like how loud it is, I'll just change that one out. Sure. Yeah. Um, maybe even make it, you know, maybe sometimes you want it loud, sometimes you don't. That pipe's huge. What is that, like three and a half inch, four inch pipe? Uh, yes, that's a three inch. Uh, that's a three inch pipe. That is big. Oh my goodness. You, you want the, the exhaust to really flow. All right. Uh, yeah. Coming out of the turbo, you don't want anything. Uh, Zero restriction. Right. Impeding it. So that's awesome. And uh, of course, it's going with a uh, Turbo Smart uh, waste gig. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the same one I got. Well, same. same I think there's a newer, new, the newer model, but uh, uh, the same I brand. I don't think there's anything different between yours and mine. Yeah, yours has just never been used. Been used. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's clean. <laughs> Very cool. And this is uh, this is where we do all the. I do all of my small small prototyping. Uh, we did this uh, this is the new breather. Oh yeah. So this this is what's going to go on the uh, go on the car uh, on a breastplate. You probably seen it already posted. But what happens is we use a standard IDF uh, yeah, air, air filter. Air filter. Available. Yeah. And, uh, and then of course it fits inside of here and, uh, you know, I rounded the edges for the airflow to flow smooth. Um, this is, uh, where it's going to be bolted through the, uh, breastplate and it'll bolt into a flange, not like yours. Yours is, uh, yours already has a flange made onto it and then you have to put a clamp on the backside, mm -hmm. but this one will go ahead and weld the tubing, uh, onto the to the uh, flange and then we just bolt the flange up that way it doesn't you know when you get ready to take the breastplate off you just just gotta unbolt it i have material on the way i'm gonna make probably about uh probably about 20 sets of these cool that's with my first run for the uh, this is really flexible too i think it's way more flexible than yes, the one i have yes that's it's got that uh silicone yeah we have a 63 millimeter throttle body i have another uh machinist machine these our our machine shop uh, is a fully automated lathe and it it comes with collets and so forth so 
I don't, I don't, uh, it doesn't have a big, big enough spindle board to do three inch. So, uh, much less four. So this That's is awesome. Let's grab one of the other ones and put it up next to it so we can kind of have a comparison. Well, you know, when you go from a uh, diameter, you know, a lot of people look and they go, oh, well, that diameter is not that much bigger, right? Or, I mean, this one is, but uh, it's like if you. It's noticeably different. Yeah, right, but if you know, if you look at the square area of this, it's probably almost twice of what this one is. Right, allow the flow. How much right, flow yeah, how much flow you're getting. So flow I still have to build the the butterflies uh, for it. The butterflies, yeah, mm -hmm. for the flap. Well, like it's it's definitely so, definitely bigger. A lot more air gonna pass through there for sure. Yes, yes. So this, these were um, I've always wanted to build them, but then now I have somebody who specifically wants one. So I built eight of them, which uh, are, are gonna be for bigger motors. Yeah. I have a feeling once they get out there, people will see them. Um, they're a full inline throttle body. They use a uh, Bosch TPS sensor. All right, so this is the uh, actual uh, throttle position sensor. The TPS sensor in the Bosch Yeah, one. this one is made by Bosch. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really nice. This connector is universal throughout a lot of the, the connectors. So uh, it's really, really nice to use. Yeah, I noticed that when I was looking for the, that connector that they use it on other stuff too. Let's see here. Uh, this is the uh, throttle body uh, for our kit. This, mm -hmm. this is the way it'll be. This is the idle air control area. Um, this is another type of idle air control, but this one's not the screw in type. Right. That's... The other one was a screw in. This one's a direct in. Um, the other one I made for somebody else that needed a uh, uh, the reason I bought them is they needed one for theirs, but they needed it as a screw in. So. Okay. But uh, anyway, this one here, it just bolts here um, to the bottom of it, and you can position it however you like. You know, either way, uh, it's universal. So, uh, and then that's the way it's going to sit in my car, is it'll be sitting in there like this. That's super cool. Yeah. And it's just all kind of, you know, keeps everything centrally located too. Makes Correct. makes your wiring a little all easier All your wiring too. and everything, yeah. yes. And yeah. so everybody, the, the tubbed out area, that, that monster. Look at all these Volkswagens in here. Just hanging out. Yeah, we don't like them very much. But. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is going to be the uh, 600 horsepower monster, guys. It looks like a Hulk right now. Maybe that's what we should call it, the Green Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> On this one, we uh, we uh, removed the front end uh, inner inner piece, and we're putting an intercooler which we've already made. So, which building the intercooler, uh, I restructured the front end. So, uh, but once it goes back together, it's all going to look just like a regular '54 Beetle. Uh, it won't look like it's much, except for the for the rims, I guess. Well, oh, anybody that knows anything about the about the bugs will we'll know right away when they look at it that there's something a little different going on yeah. <laughs> well you see this big tubbed out area in the back guys that's because he's gonna have some monster rubber sitting back here yeah. up underneath this we uh we narrowed it three inches here yeah let me show you guys if you can get a better look at it. yeah you can see the rear end there how it's all Got three inches off of. Is that off of both sides, or is yeah, it an inch and a half off, off both sides? Usually, this part sits out about right here, somewhere, mm -hmm. somewhere around here. So we took three inches and moved it, moved it in. Basically, your uh, bolt, your body bolt holes are right here, and now they're over here. So, so I've got to re redo the bolt holes and add a uh, plate there, and then uh, uh, I haven't decided yet rather to cut these off or not because I, I really don't know if we're going to be up in the uh the shock supports no up in the 600 horsepower range i think with the new setup that we're going to do because we're not doing turbo mm -hmm. um it will um it will produce such nice horsepower from from the get-go you don't you, you know, don't need that that amount uh, yeah be able to dial it back a little bit right be a little more controllable too uh, off the hit you know and all Okay, so you were saying that it's definitely not going to be a, a daily driver. It's it's going to be more of a, oh, well, you take it to the drag strip weekend, and be able to... No, 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 more of a weekend warrior car. Trust weekend, me. Yeah, weekend warrior? We definitely yeah. drive it on the weekends, you know. <laughs> so. But yeah, I, I mean, of course, I drive a van for work, right? So right. It's, it's not something I take to work with me. Um, 
but it uh definitely going to be a, a, an in an interesting uh build and so the a red baby over here this is the one that we're working on tonight right we're pulling the engine out so we yeah can do the we're going to pull the engine and uh what what happened is on this motor is the 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 motor that jason had in his car is a completely different type style motor so uh as far as the way the fan shrouds and everything work uh, and I used to have the deck lid uh, popped off in the back, so I didn't really worry about con controlling the air movement inside the engine bay, right? Yeah, you had the standoffs right. on there. So, so I had the standoffs, so that just depleted all the air through the engine. Um, so Let's go over here and take a look at it. So now we're going to. Uh, so now we're going to put the rubber seal back in here. Now, did you? Uh... This comes out all as one piece. You were able to pull it out as one piece. And I think. I think so. Not have any issues we, with any rubbing, like, the like last, here. Well, we didn't the last time, right? Because uh, that was when we were first putting it in for the first time with a clutch. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if you don't have it lined up with the clutch the first time, it's kind of a kind oh, of a yeah, pain. That's a, yeah. So um, you don't. You know, even 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 though you use that little uh, plastic, you know, that's oh, the, all I had was a tool. plastic alignment tool. Um, sometimes the clutch isn't in there. Uh, yeah, sometimes those aren't exactly true, too. You know, right. so. you kind of got to work them around until they flop in there. And I didn't want to uh, damage anything, so we did it without the deck lid on last time. Okay. So this time I want to try to see how it goes. Pull with, it out. And, yeah. Yeah, do it without it. Um, it should be, you should be able to do it. We're yeah. probably going to tape the top of it up to where we don't. Uh, oh, so you got your spring in there, too. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. This is fully held up by itself. Look. Yeah. This thing is fully closable. Look. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, so this seal that goes from here all the way down and around and seals this engine bay off, along with the seal here, okay, and the seal that goes over the back, that stops all the hot air from underneath the car from coming in, right? Right, yeah. So while this is closed... Your cold zone and your hot zone. Right, some people don't realize this, but uh, with this closed... It literally sucks the fan from the shroud. Mm -hmm. Don't air don't just drift in here. No, it puts pulled air in is there. pulled it into is here because of the enclosure of not being able to pull the air from anywhere else because of all the seals. That's right? those aerodynamics. So, right. So it's going <laughs> to suck it in through here, which is fresh air. Right. Mm -hmm. Then you're gonna then you're gonna put it through here, and that fresh air is going to go through the vent. Just like it went to your oil cooler. Yeah, it's just gonna pass right over the, the inner cooler, just right. like it's you know stock, pretty much right. a stock, stock kind of look setup. But the, it's built in and integrated into the uh, the fan shell, which is pretty trick. Well, I don't know if you no, guys. Uh, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no. Um, you're getting to drive around an 1835 with 300 horsepower, self-contained. Yeah, and that's what's really cool too, guys. It's gonna be all EFI and uh, fuel injected, so it's uh, pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. And you're using the Haltech on this one too, as management, right? Right, Haltech, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mario sell, sells his FT own setup too, right? Doesn't he have his own computer? That's... He sells the Mega Squirt stuff also. Right. But um, I I uh, I like FuelTech. I think FuelTech is a great. Uh, not only that, because it, that the 450 comes with a screen display. That right. You put the up the people mount. There's yeah. uh, a lot of different guys doing different like 3D printing type uh, for mounts up there too to correct, mount correct. that in there. Yeah, I'm not cutting my dash. That's why I don't have a tack. Yeah. My tack is my ear. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, I have it set to blow off, you know, if at, at, at 7,000. So uh, my rev limiter, so it's not okay. going to yeah, hurt anything. Yeah, so great about having a, the uh, CPU, the uh, computer management guys, is you can set all that stuff. Yeah, you can, set, you can set it up for limits. If, you, if something's not working properly, it'll just cut power to the car. Yep. You can still drive home, but you're not gonna you're gonna be limited on power. So. As you can see, I'm staying pretty busy trying to knock out some of the things. There's some other stuff that I kind of want to work on, kind of want to take care of. And uh, yeah, that's all coming in future videos. We're going to do some work on the sway bar. The uh, empty sway bar comes with kind of like these holds, these clamps that uh, 
I don't like very much, so I picked up some from CSP, you know, the, the German production CSP, that are way more sturdy, way more stronger, and uh, yeah, we'll see if they work out the way that I hope they're going to work out. But that's it for today. We talked about brakes, we went over to Daryl's, we did some work on uh, his little baby, his little red baby over there, showed you some other cars, showed you the 54, mm, that's gonna be a monster. Yeah, lots of good stuff, lots of good stuff coming, guys. Hopefully we get the transmission back pretty soon from Dave so we can get Goose, who's all wrapped up, tucked in for the night, back on the road, doing great things, and, you know, do what we all want to do, sit behind the wheel and, and drive our cars, drive our babies. See you guys in the next one. This is Jason from JW Class VW, and I'm out.